Yo, what is up guys? Del Boy here, aka Blue Collar Sports TV. Hopefully you guys are doing well. If you're new here, smash that like, hit subscribe, all of that good stuff. So this video topic was actually suggested by one of my Patreon subscribers, Mark from Unrivaled Boxing Talk and News. And the topic that he wanted me to cover was five fights that I've seen in love that not many people talk about. And I found this to be a really interesting topic. And um, yeah, I'm going to fire some fights at you, fights that I love, that in my opinion, don't really get the recognition that they deserve. Now the first fight, um, in my opinion, was the best fight of a previous decade, 2010 to obviously the end of 2019. And that fight was a cruiserweight fight down in Russia in 2013 between Denis Lebedev and Guillermo Jones. This fight was a world title fight back in the day when it happened. It was for the WBA cruiserweight title. And yeah, man, um, one thing I do have to say, this fight actually later got changed to a no contest due to Guillermo Jones failing a drug test. So I do have to, you know, put that out there. But man, this fight really had everything. Back and forth moments, exchanges you know, violence, brutality, and one of the worst injuries that you'll see in a boxing ring. This fight was absolutely brutal. Quite frankly, this fight should have finished Denis Lebedev. Denis Lebedev actually went on to have some success after this fight, though I have to say, I don't think he was ever quite the same since. The fight definitely took a lot out of him, but you know, he's lucky that it didn't take a hell of a lot more than it actually did. But yeah, man, the fight itself was a crazy, crazy war. Um... Early on in the fight, Lebedev was landing bombs on Guillermo Jones. You could see the sweat fly off Guillermo Jones' head. He was taking some absolute haymakers. And early on, I felt that, um, you know, Dennis Lebedev was the guy in control. I felt he was boxing better, landing the harder shots. But Guillermo Jones just stuck in there. And as the rounds went on, Guillermo Jones started to claw it back. He was starting to have a lot more success letting go of his punches and especially landing some monster right hands. And yeah, as the fight wore on, um, Guillermo Jones was growing into it, growing into it, growing into it. And Lebedev was the guy fading. Um, he sustained a horrible eye injury in this fight and that affected his ability to see the punches coming. And, you know, in the second half of this fight, it turned into a bit of a beatdown, to be honest. Lebedev was still landing some colossal shots, but... He couldn't really match what was coming back. And eventually, he just sustained far too much punishment to continue. And, you know, the fight got beat out of him, basically. He showed tremendous heart. Heart that you can never teach. Heart that you rarely see in boxing. But ultimately, it was Guillermo Jones who won this fight. And he won it by an 11th round stoppage um, down in Russia. Another thing I remember about this fight was the fact that it was on Box Nation. And, um... I believe it was Costa Zhu who was in Denis Lebedev's corner and the commentary team were giving Costa Zhu a lot of um, criticism for not pulling Denis Lebedev out because it was obvious, you know, rounds earlier that Lebedev was in a bad way and he was taking an absolute beating. His eye was grotesque. I, I think I'll put a, a picture of it in this video. But one of the worst boxing injuries that you'll see Dennis Lebedev looked like E.T. at the end of this fight. Absolute savagery. If you guys haven't seen this fight, you need to check it out. One of the best cruiserweight fights you'll see. And in my opinion, the best fight of, uh, of that decade. It was a really, really good fight. It's a fight that I go back and actually re-watch quite frequently, to be honest. But yeah, man, if you've not seen it, yo, you guys need to check this one out. I, I highly recommend it. Um... Now the next fight, the second fight that I, I loved, that in my opinion not too many people talk about, was a fight um, that took place back in 2007, February 2007. The fight took place at Wembley Arena in London, UK, and the fight was between Graham Earl and Michael Cassidis. This fight was actually for the interim WBO lightweight title, and one reason that this fight in particular is kind of... Um, special to me is because Graham Earl was a guy from my local area and I watched this fight as a kid. Everybody was rooting for him in the local area and this fight was on ITV4. I remember watching it and just being on the edge of my seat. This was the fight that well and truly got me into boxing hardcore. I was always a casual fan as a kid before then. I used to watch the old fight here and there 
but the Graham Earl Michael Katsidis fight was the fight that sold me on boxing and I've been hooked ever since like a junkie. Um, this fight was crazy. Fight ended in five rounds. Graham Earl got pulled out at the end of the fifth round. Basically his corner just felt that he took far too much punishment and they pulled him out for his own good. Out of selfishness, I always wonder what would have happened if it was allowed to continue. Me personally, as much as I was rooting for Graham Earl at the time as a kid, um, I think Michael Katsidis would have gone on to get the knockout. But um, the fight itself was absolute carnage. First round, Michael Katsidis goes in there like a bull in the china shop, beats down Graham Earl, forcing him back and landing hard right hand after hard right hand. He actually drops Graham Earl twice in the first round and it looked like it was going to end in the first round. But Graham L got through the first round, um, but quite frankly, round two did not start any better. Once again, Michael Katsidis forcing him back, um, landing hard punishing shots. Graham L tries to fight him off valiantly, but once again, Graham L gets dropped with a right hand. Third time in the fight, three times in two rounds. Um, Graham L once again beats the count, and at this point, his corner throwing the towel. But the referee, Mickey Van, is having none of it. He throws the towel out and he allows both guys to continue. Bear in mind, at this point, Graham Earl was getting beat up. But after he threw the towel out, seconds after, Graham Earl lands this hard right hand as Katsidis is coming in. He catches him square on and he drops Katsidis. And all of a sudden, Graham Earl is back in the fight and these guys go to fucking war. It was absolute carnage. And in round two, for the rest of round two, Michael Katsidis was pretty badly hurt. Um, they get to round three, both guys have success, both guys land hard shots. There is no defense in this fight whatsoever. It's purely down to will to win. And who's got the best chin, to be honest, because both guys could punch at a certain level. Round three, both guys had success, both guys were trading. Um, once again, you know, just absolute carnage. Round four, I felt Katsidis starts to get back in control. But he himself is actually still shipping severe punishment in the process. But round four, uh, I think it was in the second half of that round, um, there were some crazy exchanges. Michael Katsidis must have thrown like a 50-punch combination trying to get Graham Earl out of there. But Graham Earl wasn't having none of it. And um, yeah, Graham Earl gets through round four. And round five, you know, um, Earl was trying his best. He landed some good shots. But Michael Katsidis was in control in round five. Um, you know, still going to war, but he was starting to regain control. And at the end of the fifth round, uh, Graham Earl's corner decided to pull him out. And I can see why, but like I said earlier, selfishly, I would have loved to, to see this one continue. Um, because it was an absolute bar burner. You know, the crowd were going crazy. The atmosphere was immense. Just a brilliant fight. One of the fights of the year for that year, if not the fight of the year, in my opinion, uh, in 2007. Just absolute craziness between Graham Earl and Michael Katsidis. Brilliant fight. If you've not seen it, give it a watch. It's only five rounds. You'll certainly enjoy it, I'm sure. But the third fight is a little more mainstream, I have to say. And it is the 2009 fight of the year between Juan Manuel Marquez and Juan Diaz. I believe it was the WBO and WBA titles that were on the line in this fight. But um, yeah, man, this fight itself was carnage. Juan Diaz at the time was an aggressive uh, swarmer, high volume, high work rate, and basically he would try to drown guys in volume and sheer pressure. And as we know, Juan Manuel Marquez is a master counterpuncher with punching power. He can fight, he can brawl himself, and he would oblige you if he wanted to tear up. And he certainly did that against Juan Diaz. Um, it was the tale of Juan Diaz's sheer volume versus Marquez's harder counter shots in the exchanges. Some of the exchanges in this fight were crazy, man. Um, both guys were hurt, both guys were having moments. And after 7-8 rounds, man, this fight was really hard to see where it was going, to be honest. You could see it going either way, but the experienced Marquez pulls it out of a bag and he actually stops um, Baby Bull Diaz in the ninth round, I believe. Um, he drops him, I believe, with, with a right hand. And I remember the finish to this fight. Marquez lands a picture-perfect right uppercut, which drops Juan Diaz like a sack of potatoes. It looked like somebody shot him from the crowd. He went down that dramatically. Um, but yeah, I, I think it was Max Kellerman who summed this fight up quite well. And I don't, I don't like Max Kellerman, but he said, 
what we saw, and I'm paraphrasing, but he said what we saw was a very good young fighter get knocked out by a great old fighter. And that's what sums this fight up. It was back and forth, there were exchanges, but it was the great Juan Manuel Marquez that got the knockout win in this fight. And um, yeah, it, it, this one is more mainstream. It was 2009 Fight of the Year. But still though, not too many people talk about this fight today. And it was a really, really good fight, man. Blood and guts. Um, like I said, both guys were having success. Just a great all-Mexican battle, really, uh, to be honest. And um, yeah, they, they certainly put on a show. And obviously, uh, a couple of years later, they actually had a rematch. Second fight wasn't as good, but still a pretty good fight, man. And yeah, that's my third fight for this list. Marquez versus Diaz in 2009. Now, the fourth fight that I'm going to nominate for this list was actually the 2001 fight of the year. So you could say this was somewhat mainstream, but in my opinion, people forget about this fight because of Mickey Ward's fights with Arturo Gatti. And they don't talk about Mickey Ward versus Emmanuel Augustus. This fight was a 10-rounder back in 2001. I want to say this fight was actually televised on ESPN in the States. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but this was that typical ESPN Friday Night Fights type main event, you know, two sort of fringe contenders slash gatekeepers going at it in an all-out war. Um, actually, this fight is one of my controversial boxing opinions. I believe Mickey Ward versus Emmanuel Augustus is actually better than Mickey Ward versus Arturo Gatti 1. To some people, that is sacrilege, I understand, that was a great fight in itself, but for me, the fight between Mickey Ward and Emmanuel Augustus was a little bit better. I enjoyed it a little bit more. Again, not saying Ward Gatti wasn't a great fight, it obviously was. But for me, Mickey Ward versus Emmanuel Augustus is far too underrated. You know, both of these guys were the stereotypical blue collar fighters. They'd fight anyone, anywhere, anytime. Durable, they'd come to fight. And they were just all round entertainers as far as I'm concerned. Of course, Emmanuel Augustus was known as the drunken master. His style was just crazy, fought in a real offbeat rhythm, and, you know, we don't even need to introduce Mickey Ward. That guy was just a warrior, full stop. Good power, brutal left hook to the body, and an excellent chin. And when these two guys shared the ring, they put on a war for the ages. It was a shame, really, that this fight was only a 10-rounder, to be honest. And rightfully, this fight got fight of the year in 2001. They really put on a show. And, yeah, basically, my reasoning for putting this fight on the list is the fact that it's overlooked by Gatti and Ward. And I can see why, though that was a great trilogy, but yo, Mickey Ward versus Emmanuel Augustus, if you've not seen it, there's a reason this fight was 2001 Fight of the Year. I highly recommend that you guys check it out. You will not be disappointed. And lastly, the final fight on this list, and a fight I recommend very highly, is the 1997 clash between Costa Zhu and Vince Phillips. Now, at this point, Costa Zhu had numerous title defences in the 140-pound division. He was basically smashing everybody, and yeah, he was creating a big name for himself. But along came Vince Phillips. At the time, this was seen as a big upset. Um, you know, Vince Phillips knocked out Costa Zhu in the 10th round, of which was a war. Um, I'm surprised not many people talk about this fight, to be honest. I actually only recently watched this fight for the first time, a couple of months ago, and... First and foremost, the thing to note, both of these guys were big punchers. And also stylistically, both guys were very good straight punchers. And essentially this fight was two guys just trading straight right hands, landing absolute bombs on each other. Um, you know, back and forth, several hard shots landed by both fighters. Early on in the fight, I felt Costi as you hurt Vince Phillips a few times without really, you know, hurting him too badly. Um, and yeah, it looked like Costa as you after like six rounds, was in control of a very competitive fight, but he was taking so many risks in this fight, going for the knockout, and in round seven, Vince Phillips turns the tide, and he drops Costa Zhu with a left hook, straight right hand combination. It basically caught Costa Zhu slipping, Costa Zhu was getting a bit cocky, and uh, Vince Phillips made him pay for it, and this round was really the turning point for Vince Phillips. After this round, it looked like... Um, Vince Phillips' straight right hand was having a much greater effect on Costa Zhu. Before round seven, I don't think Costa Zhu was hurt that much by Vince Phillips, 
but obviously during round seven when he got dropped, and after round seven, Vince Phillips was starting to get to him, and I purely think it was down to the accumulation of straight right hands that were landed, um, because he was landing a hell of a lot of clean flush shots on Costia Zhu. Actually, both guys in this fight showed excellent chins, because both guys were punchers, both guys were setting their feet, getting leverage on straight right power shots. And the fact that this fight actually went 10 rounds was quite impressive because, like I said, man, the amount of flush shots landed by both guys was crazy. Um, but yeah, eventually the punishment took its toll and Vince Phillips caught Costa Zhu with a series of right hands and I think a left hook as well. And eventually he finished Costa Zhu off in the corner. Costa Zhu was out on his feet and the referee jumped in to wave it off. Vince Phillips became the new IBF super lightweight champion that night in a big upset. But the fight they put forth was an excellent bout, you know? A lot of people know that Costa Zhu lost to Vince Phillips, but people don't really talk about how great that fight was. It was a really great back and forth fight between two technically sound punchers, and Vince Phillips was the guy who pulled off the upset. Highly recommend this fight for anybody who's not seen it. And yeah, those are five of my most uh, loved fights that I feel are underrated. Thank you to Mark from Unrivaled Boxing Talk and News for the patronage. Hopefully you guys as well enjoyed this topic. I actually really enjoyed thinking about this one, going through fights that I've really enjoyed that are underrated. And yeah, those are